Hello and welcome to another Tales of the Uncharted. No, damn it. Tormented Space. <laughs> Tormented Space. Space. Oh, Sorry. Wow. I, was, I, was, I was really intrigued by a really sort of saucy Rod story. I know. I was trying that and I completely lost track of what I was saying because <laughs> I was focusing too much on doing the voice. Anyway, <laughs> hi. I'm, I'm Kay. <laughs> I'm Kaki. We're from So Farscape. And once again, we're taking a break between episodes to read some. some... I've got to make sure that I don't call it fan fiction because this is, again, licensed fiction because we're catching you up on Ooh, the magazines that you one. missed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Number six. Ooh. I I am so lucky. Ooh. Episode 6 of the Farscape official magazine. More info on season 4, just like they promised us in the last episode. Win Farscape goodies. Free poster. Bad mother. Black magic. <laughs> Free poster. Bad mother. Mm, I'm, just reading a- what I'm, sa- I'm just reading what it says on the cover here. <laughs> and writing Farscape. Justin Monjo reveals show secrets. <gasps> oh... You know, I'm going to have to steal these back from you because I actually, like, yeah. every time I mean to, but I, uh, to, like, read them cover to cover before I hand them over to you, and I, I don't yeah. have yet. No, okay. I, Season four is set to be the best year yet. Yeah. That's what they are uh, selling it out. We've got a lovely crew shot here with uh, basically everyone. Lonnie Tupac's in it twice, but. Twice? Well, there's got this pilot in the background. Oh, so, yes. It's like <laughs> and Grace, which. Okay, well, yes. that's definitely not a promo photo for season four. Uh, no, I guess, but it does have Jewel in it with only one eye, which is season... Is that the start of season End four? of season three. Yeah. End of season three. She got Boo Light in it. Boo Light, is that like the... That was the metallic species that, like, the, right. they were piecing the pieces... But it, parts back but it together. was because of it was she actually had some sort of eye injury, didn't she? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I mean it's easy enough to uh, explain yeah, it away. Nicely done. Yeah, I thought it was maybe the Farscape version of pink eye. You know, oh, I've got blue light. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Yikes! Uh, and a fantastic shot of Claudia Black in her best Mad Max style uh, pose there. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, that must have been in like Infinite Possibilities. Yes. Driving around in the deserts of Australia. Oh, oh, this is this is an oldie. This is back to taking the stone. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Chiana and, and Aaron, where uh, Chiana had her uh, sort of dreadlock mud ah, phase, and here we get to the sons and daughters pay phase. Where there's a photo of uh, uh, Zalax and Aaron, yes. the, the the sun women. Oh, yeah. So we're back to that episode. There's quite a lot of things going on here. Hidden memories. Who's this? I don't remember. Oh, that's John in his uh, massively uh, light protection outfit thing, you know, with these... Oh, yes, against Traltics. That's where the one, yes. When humans are superior. <laughs> and that's the story that's so the, far. No, 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 oh. that's the music cue. That's That that, that happens, when, I think. Oh, okay. Humans are superior. Fair. No, good. Okay. Oh, a little bit about the monster creature workshop, I suppose. Oh, I'm definitely borrowing that one off you. Yeah, I, I would think you, you know would what so, a fan so. I am. I know of uh, Dave Elsie and the creature workshop. Oh, this is like a fantastic pose of Dargo on the front on the <laughs> <laughs> from uh, Won't Get Fooled Again yep. when he was whatever his name is, wearing his khakis and his tennis shoes. Oh. I saw on the opposite side there was a, 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 a sort of postal order slip for the Farscape action figures. Yes. What a collectible those are. Oh, I suppose that if you get your hands on one of those at the time, then you can uh, make bank now. Although, you, well, I actually have no idea how much they'd go for. We have, in fact, been been offered some by some generous listeners, and I was like, as much as I, as much as I love that, and as yeah. much as I would love to. There is no way that those could contribute to a podcast episode. Because no, they're no just... other than here sitting here going like, "Ooh, yeah, ah, wow." <laughs> <laughs> yes, like it would, it would genuinely delight me. But sort of as a person and not as part of the podcast, and then, uh, I feel a little bit weird about that. No, absolutely. So we have a story today called uh, "That Old Voodoo," which oh, takes yes. place during season two of Farscape by and John is... Kenneth Muir. Yes. I think that's how you pronounce it. Muir, yeah, it sounds vaguely Scottish, oh, Hebridesian. Some... <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I've known a Muirhead. Muirhead, Muir. No, as in that was the, the person's family name, Muirhead. Oh, yeah. okay. Muir, what, what is it again? It's, it's like, um, um, it's, it's, it's some sort of good geographical feature, I think, a Muir. Yeah, considering that it's, it's Scotland, it's got a sort of rustic I mean, everything's a geographic feature in Scotland. But also like a certain degree of misery uh, right. associated with it. Right, but I'm pretty it. sure it's either something to do with water or rock, which is like, you it's know... It's maybe more. 
Well, in, in English, oh. is that a is that a cognate or a possible? False That's both water and log rock. Hey, what more do you want? <laughs> Anyway, paper, I guess. Oh, I mean that's 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 trees which you have in moors as well. So, all right. Madame Verx's shop was located on the commerce station's seediest tier, between an eatery and a holographic tattoo parlor. Is that like for holographic tattoos or, is, or the parlor? Or is the parlor? I was thinking the exact same <laughs> thing. I was getting hung up on the same thing. Hardly the digs of a seer renowned throughout the uncharted territories, as Rigel boasted. This is it, Crichton groaned. I thought Madame Verxoid was a fortune teller to the stars. Madame Verxa, the Hynerian corrected, hovering near the habitat's entrance. And she is, or at least she was. Her ancestors were so wealthy they refused a seat on my royal council. Psychics on a political council, Crichton smirked. Somewhere Nancy Reagan is smiling. Yikes. <laughs> Dominars always employ prognox prognosticators, there we go, Rigel elaborated. In fact, I had the finest gyromantis in the galaxy. What the frell is a gyromantis? An insectoid that contacts spirit dimensions by dancing in circles. Rigel right. grew impatient. Don't you know anything? Mm, about dancing? Physic psychic bugs? Mm, no. That is not true. You Well, you will have been going to that pleasure planet in the future at this point. Fair. Then wait outside with while Verxa scans my future. I've denied myself this pleasure too long and don't want you ruining it. No way! Crichton followed as uh, Rigel throne slid across the, pre- uh, the permeable velvet coloured screen at the shop's entrance. Mm. Sounds like it's a holographic shop. Yeah! Uh, you wanted Miranda's muscle, and I don't like the looks of this. I think Madame Verxa had fallen hard times. Mm, haven't we all? Rigel mumbled. Before Crichton could answer, a baritone voice boomed from the darkened chamber as he reached for his pulse pistol. Welcome. Rigel's throne slit slifted into reserve. Uh, reverse. Reserve. Um, yeah. <laughs> Blocking the alarmed human. Please don't embarrass me. Crichton relaxed as crimson light illuminated the chamber, revealing a translucent table. At its centre. Seated behind it was a robed figure, her face obscured by a hood. Madame Verx, Verxa, sorry. Rigel used his most regal voice as subtly, no stubby digits, stretched out in a gesture of openness. I am... The 16th Rigel. The, the sort of instruction earlier on was baritone, so yes. I elected to go with a sort of Walter Cronkite mm-hmm. kind of deal, which may not be... The most suitable for a fortune teller woman, but no, you I'm going to roll with it. Yeah. The voice completed Rigel's sentence. I am honored to scan your future. A smile widened at the Hynerian's cheeks. Excellent. How will you reward the spirit dimensions for future's glimpse? Verxa demanded. I'm sort of delving from uh, Walter Cronkite into whoever the voiceover artist was who performed the voice for Hercules uh, Mm. that was physically performed by Arnold Schwarzenegger in Hercules in New York, where you see the young Austrian walking through the garden with some beardy motherfucker going, but you, Zeus, my father, are a god. Oh, yes, before he spoke sufficient English to do his own lines. Mm -hmm. Yes. With 60 massats, Rigel spilled a handful of crystalline currency onto the table. Half now, half following your reading. Hey, where did you get those? Crichton protested. My personal stash, Rigel answered curtly. Now shut up. Crichton obliged, watching as Verx's two-fingered claw dragged Rigel's money into a pocket. As if on cue, the light overhead shifted and Verx's face grew visible. To Crichton's shock, it was transparent. Beneath a jellyfish-like wrapping of loose flesh, a multi-lobed brain pulsated. Behind three yellowed eyes, gnarled optic stalks stretched to the central nervous system. Rigel revealed no sign of disgust, but Crichton had difficulty masking his own. He detected the moist, Moist. multicoloured details of uh, uh, Verxa's nasal cavity and mushroom-shaped ears. It was like a Grey's Anatomy illustration, only slimier. This will totally do it for some of our listeners. So, <laughs> for those of you fantastic sex weirdos out there, enjoy. Place your hands on the tableau, Verxa instructed, ignoring Crichton's glare. Rigel complied, flattening his fingers against the platform's illuminated squares. Opposite him, Verxa positioned her hands on identical receptacles. 
Silence fell throughout the chamber as Verxa shut her eyes. Unfortunately, Diaphanous eyelids failed to cloak her oversized orbs, and Crichton was certain she was staring at him. It's like, what the point of eyelids if they don't cover your... Ah, I suppose for keeping them moist. Yeah, and there may be other frequencies that they block that we can't... Fair, fair, fair. Yeah, you know. Um, but, 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 uh, uh, I mean, when it comes to like stuff like terahertz waves, we're pretty transparent, right? Ooh, I don't know. You know, that, or, or, sorry, that's the millimeter wave mm. cameras that can safely look through clothes, clothes not and, to people, I think. But yes. Oh um, yeah. Let's see where we're we? Crichton was certain she was staring at him. Crichton shifted uncomfortably and waited microts for something to happen. But Rigel and Verxa remained frozen, and Crichton realized he'd never seen the Hynerian quiescent for so long. No, because the puppeteers do their job. <laughs> <sighs> A quarter arm elapsed, and Crichton's stomach growled, interrupting Verxa's silent psychic rapport. He was getting hungry. Uh, okay, John Edward, let's move this along, oh, he implored. Boy. We've got a ship to catch, and your crystal balls don't seem to be working. But Verxel was undaunted, and an odd thing occurred. The light squares underneath Rigel's hands transformed, as if made of running water The light dripped onto Verx's side of the tableau. The seer's palm squares flared, and their accumulated light crawled up her arms and swirled over her placid face. Wow. As if Verx's visage were a viewport, it raged with turbulent pictures. Rigel's olive face, then a microscopic infection spreading throughout internal organs. Without warning, a new movie projected itself upon Verx's see-through skull. A spinning chamber, possibly on Moya. Great disorientation. And then came the grand finale. An explosion in space. Fireworks of flaming metallics. Finally, the images ceased and Verx's lids retracted. I'm sorry, she apologized to the anxious Hynerian. You'll be ravaged by disease. A shipmate will lose the path and your crew will die in freezing space. Your vessel destroyed. Rigel gasped, as and, and gasp he should. Wow. Now, that will be 30 masses. Look, hey, like there are people who, who practice various forms of, you know, fortune-telling, haruspexy and, and, and whatever, and, like, there is a code of ethics that one doesn't deliver bad news that one practices, you know, campsite rules, leave right. your customer better than they, uh, than they were before. You can inspire them with hope or... Yes, well, uh, maybe uh, this person <clears throat> actually has future-telling powers. Does, does that not matter? Shouldn't you still have the same obligation when you're Depends providing? Depends on what you're doing, you know? Mm. I mean, I'd say that that obligation is a lot stronger if you're a quack or a uh, entertainer, let's put it in a generous way, right. than if you are actually providing a bona fide service. Now, okay, there there are quacks out there who, like, prey on the vulnerability of, right. uh, of people, but, like, it's also, like, a, a tradition of... of I guess entertainment is a, is a valid right. way to say Right, that's what I'm saying. Providing like, comfort, maybe an outlet. Yes, but if you are providing a bona fide future viewing service, then, you know, the rules might be different. I mean, Ugh. I can see that the rules would be different. It's like, no, everything will be fine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> everything will work out just as it was going to. Yes. <laughs> Rigel sat in his quarters on Moya, dejected. Bad enough that he'd paid from his personal fortune for services that, as Dominar, should have been his privilege. But to hear so dire a prediction was intolerable. Intolerable. Perhaps the only fate worse than dying with escaped prisoners was dying in mud with escaped prisoners. He doesn't unlike his mud, does he? No. Oh, he hates mud. But, which is weird as an amphibian, but okay. But dying from an invitation of destructive cells was hardly more desirable, and Rigel wondered how the, his end would come. Would his shipmates even wait until his final breath to ransack his belongings? <laughs> China had been eyeing his selection glow globes for a quarter cycle. And Rigel, by the way, has made this very clear when people pointed out, like, yeah. you're, you're aquatic. Yes, water. Yeah, not, not mud. Not mud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fair. Mud sucks you down. It, yeah. it was all so grim. And Zebulgan seers like Verxa were never wrong. That's why they were so highly prized. Thoughtful, Rigel. Zahn's melodic voice interrupted Rigel's brooding. Oh, Zahn. It came as soon as Jolton, uh, uh, John reported his prophecy. I'm dying, the Hynerian moped. We all share that fate, the Delvian replied evenly. But I'm dying right now, Rigel spat. And I hoped you would tell me about... The goddess? Does she show you the future? No, 
Zahn knelt behind, beside him. It's her children who create all futures. Then what did Delvians make of seers? Rigel was curious. The goddess has blessed many pro 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 prognitions with gifts. Prognosticators. It's oh, a tricky a one, isn't it? Oh, yes. The goddess has blessed many prognosticators with gifts of insight, San con considered. But if self-interest dominates kindness, vision grow muddled. But if self-interest dominates kindness, oh, sorry. grow... Yeah. Right, so it's a dominar, I, it's I not like... Yes, I don't... <laughs> self-interest and dominar are very closely associated. I know, right, that's why my mind went there. <laughs> because psychics take payment, their insight is compromised. Rigel sought to understand. In Hynerian culture, they've always been rewarded. That's corruption, wow. Zahn insisted. Wow. The goddess grants these gifts uh, for the betterment of her children. To provide from her, that generosity is unthinkable. The goddess would never bless one so venal as Vrexa with insight. So how do you explain this? Rigel lifted his purple robe, revealing a misshapen discoloration on the green flesh above his third stomach. Zahn recoiled. The disease, Rigel was glum. Vrexa's prophecy has come true. This is Dren, Aaron swore. Muscular arms folded across her chest. Rigel is sick. Oh, sorry. Next, next, your line. Sorry. Rigel is sick. Son repeated. Sorry, I'd already moved on to the next page. Because oh. I thought these were all yours. <laughs> okay. Let's try this again, shall yep. we? Then, like, <laughs> this is Dren, Aaron swore. Muscular arms fell across her chest. Rigel is sick. Son repeated, looking worriedly at her friends. How bad, Crichton wondered, leaning against the main panel in the gold-hued command tier. Oh. One stomach has nearly failed, and the others will follow. I've <gasps> begun tests, but Hynerian diseases are unusual, mm. Sam explained. Two-thirds of their physiologically seems to be geared toward digestion. Should Bradger lose even one stomach, he'll die of starvation. Wow. Uh, an ironic end for a Hynerian. Aaron acknowledged with a raised eyebrow, but as far as this disease representing a prophecy come true, I don't freling think so. Chana shivered. Is it Maldis? At this point, I always want to pull a house and say, it's never Maldis <laughs> anymore. <laughs> no, 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 I guess not. The Wicked Witch of the West? Crichton straightened. Why wouldn't he attack why would he attack Rigel instead of me? Or Zan? I concur, Zan nodded. This isn't Maldis. It's never Maldis! <laughs> Then Ver then Verxa is a legitimate seer, Dargo reasoned. She can read the future. Don't tell me Luxons are as stupid as Hynerians, Aaron protested. Dargo grimaced. I suppose peacekeepers don't believe in prophecy. Mm, peacekeepers forge the future with discipline and resolve. They don't seek answers from meat-grubbing charlatans. M Massat, I Massat? think that is. The, oh, the, yes. the masses, that's the currency. Right, sorry. Um, John, Zan saw the human in deep thought. Verxa showed us real images. Rigel's face, a spinning room, a ship destroyed, Crichton recalled. Zebelgans project, project thoughts. She stole those images from Rigel's mind, or yours, Aaron suggested. Mm. Or she may have legitimately determined our future, Dargo maintained. Until the amazing Randy debunks her, we should assume the worst. Crichton was grim. That she's seen our future, or one possible future. Yotzes, Aaron exclaimed. What were her predictions? That one of us would get lost? That we'd die in space? None of that's happened. Rigel's sick because he's soft-bellied troll who believes in nonsense. <laughs> okay, okay, you're at least half right. Uh. I disagree with your description of our friend, Aaron, but you have a point, Zahn acknowledged. Rigel has faith in Verx's prognostications. Therefore, the illness could be psychosomatic. With physical manifestations? Chana sounded doubtful. That is what psychosomatic means, Chana. Yes, well. <laughs> Under certain mind states, such as meditative trance, some species heal sicknesses, go blind, even levitate, Zan confirmed. The mind-body connection is a powerful tool, dude. Where the brain directs, our body follows, man. <laughs> so Buckweed needs a little couch time with Dr. Katz, Crichton reasoned. Before Zan could reply, an alarm chimed and Pilot's helmet-like visage materialized on the clamshell viewer. Oh, there it is. Forgive the intrusion, Pilot began. There's a problem. What's wrong? Aaron and Crichton questioned simultaneously. 
Moya has detected enormous quantities of chlorium in her neural nexus. Oh, no. Pilot's eyes bulged. Portions of her mind are becoming numb. How could chlorium get aboard? Dargo blurted. That substance was one of the six forbidden Leviathan cargoes. Moya has verified its presence, Pilot answered testily, and at this rate of expansion, Moya will lose control of air bladders in an arm. Our atmosphere... We'll be vented into space, Aaron said, completing Charna's thought. Uh, that's not all, Pilot warned. If Moya's senses don't return within two hours, she'll be able to direct her engines to appropriate internal functions. Uh-oh, Crichton grimaced. That could result in... Stoppage and backdraft. Moya will explode. The prophecy, Dargo whispered. First a loss of atmosphere, then destruction. Coincidence, Aaron countered. Pilot... Can DRDs repair the Nexus? Mm, DRDs aren't responding to directives. Okay, hang on. Moving to the next page. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, yeah, it's almost there. God. Darko faced Crichton. One of us must enter the Nexus and remove the chlorium manually. Rock, paper, scissors? Crichton <laughs> queried. Frell that. I'll go. Aaron decided impatiently, <laughs> making for Command's egg-shaped exit. Be careful, John called after her. Vexa's predictions are looking more accurate by the Macrot. But Aaron was already gone. Superstitious hazmats, Aaron swore. She removed the small, delicately curved access to hatch to Moya's massively neural hive. <laughs> I'm doing a background for... Oh, okay. This is very this is superstition. But oh, like very Stevie superstitious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Crawling inside the cramped star-shaped corridor, she felt nauseous. Placing a balancing hand against the bronze wall ridge, Erin inhaled deeply. Still disoriented, she straightened and noticed something unusual. Do you know that's... Like, the instrument that he's playing, I forget what it's called, but it's essentially like a piano with electric guitar strings. Hmm. And it's the only one that makes, like, that sound. Okay. It's wild. The compartment door had vanished. Erin shook her head, clearing out the dizziness, and glared at the other way. Maybe she turned herself around? She only gazed at it, but I love that you sort of inferred that she does glare the other way. Yeah, it's, it's an Erin thing. But there was no hatch in that direction either. Only an endless corridor. Oh, this is frelling great, Erin cursed. <laughs> She had no idea which path to follow, and even when she took a tentative step in one direction, she collided with Unforgiving Wall. She could have sworn it hadn't been there a microt earlier. Mm -hmm. Zahn and Crichton stood patiently at Rigel's bedside in the Delvian's apothecary, the Hynerian spirits woefully low. As Zahn probed at Rigel's tumour-covered stomach, Crichton continued his interrogation. Can you remember anything else about Verxa? Uh, she's a Ze Zebelgun seer. I know that, Sparky. I need details. She's killing me with her prophecy, the downcast Hynerian grumbled. Isn't that enough? Her family refused a position on your council? Did they have any other political affiliations? I don't remember. Come on, this is important. Hmm. Well, there were rumblings of an alliance with Scarons, the Hynerian huffed. But if that had happened, she wouldn't be conducting business out of a hovel. Scarons, Crichton contemplated. Maybe she sold us out for a big payday to get off that orbiting slum? Perhaps, Zan considered. But why would Scarons require a seer with their own formidable powers of telepathy? Mm, convenience, Crichton suggested. Mm. Maybe she's a spy living on that station like a Nazi collaborator in Casablanca. <laughs> also, if a prophesician prophesizes, like, then that doesn't... In you know, you can't... In influence the future, you know, you can't, like, prophesize things and make, make them happen, then you're, like, a future shaper, not a prophesizer. <laughs> like, I agree, but I kind of want to argue with you to make you say <laughs> prophesizer a few more times and see how many syllables wind up in there. <laughs> but why attack us? Scorpius half scaring. They might be curious why Darth Vader wants the plans to the Death Star. Zan looked at him quizzically, continuing her examination. But they won't get answers by killing us and destroying Moya. A flaw in their plan, Crichton acknowledged, confused, or in my theory. Uh, John, Zan called abruptly, gripping Rigel's left palm. See that? What is it? Rigel worried. A puncture. Zan pointed out the pinprick on Rigel's hand. 
Did Verxa give you an injection? No. But you did put your little... <laughs> but you did put your little patty cakes on that table, Crichton reminded him. Maybe it was encoded to deliver something into your system. A virus? You mean she infected me? Rigel's mouth became an ugly scowl. That trunk! <laughs> Yes, because when someone infects you with a with a disease through illicit means, that means they're a slut. Mm. In command, Tiana tensed as pilot's crown skull appeared on the clamshell. Three ships have emerged from Starburst. Oh, wow. The symbiote reported. Scarrens. No, no, Mr. Muir. Scarrens don't Starburst. Oh, good point, yes. Yes, that is a, 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 a defense to- maneuver unique to Leviathans. Yes. Can Moya starburst? I'm surprised it made it through uh, the the checking. That's uh, mm, yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Or, or maybe they're doing their own thing. Gianna queried, "Can Moya starburst?" Then those neutral pathways must be purge of chlorium. Pilot disclosed. Officer Sun hasn't removed it, and the numbness is spreading. Okay, I know it's not our thing to criticize writers, and I know that Demure has uh, undoubtedly like had a lot of practice, but I'm noticing like. An aversion to he said and she said. Oh, right, right they said, yes. That whole sort of thing, which is totally fine. Yeah. You don't have to disclose and prosnosticate, or as John Watson does an awful lot in the Sherlock Holmes stories, uh, ejaculate. Ejaculated, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Officer Sun has removed it all and the numbness is spreading. I'm um, sorry, I lost my... Uh, my. Oh, here we go. Accelerate like to maximum, Chiana ordered, watching the viewing port warily as the trio of snub-nosed fighters, all bristling with weaponry, arced towards the teardrop-shaped leviathan. She addressed her next remark to the calm on her jumpsuit. Dargo, we've got a problem. Scarrens, Dargo grumbled. That's not good. Hail, Prince of the Obvious. Yeah. And Pilot says Aaron hasn't cleared out the quarium. Gianna added. You get the defense's shield operational, I'll handle Aaron. Uh, fine, but make it fast. Acknowledged. Dargo terminated the conversation. Aaron, repond. Now. Aaron here. The peacekeeper sounded <laughs> uncharacteristically diffident. What the frell are you doing? We're running out of time. I can't seem to find my way, Aaron admitted weakly. I keep bumping into walls. Dargo froze. What did you say? I'm lost. Aaron conceded. I keep walking in circles. Yachts, have you been smoking gala root? No, but something's wrong. I can't think straight. Stay where you are, Dargo rolled his eyes. I'll get to you after I complete your mission. Wow. Crichton listened <clears throat> intently as Dargo recounted the situation. Scarron fighters were closing. Aaron was wandering the ship's innards in a stupor, and there was no indication of chlorium in Moya's nexus, despite Pilot's protestations to the contrary. Two of Verx's predictions had come true, and unless Moya could be healed, the most devastating omen would come to pass. Total destruction. I have it, Zahn announced triumphantly, <laughs> and Christ <laughs> <in> it. <laughs> Thank the goddess for Zahn's calm in the midst of these all-too-frequent storms. It's a nano device, a miniature trickster, she revealed, pointing to a diagram of Rigel's nervous system. Certain Scarron corporations used them to sabotage competition. A microscopic chip was delivered through injection, launching itself in the portion of Rigel's brain, modulating his senses. Remove it! (laughs) Rigel ordered imperiously. This isn't that simple, Rigel, uh, Zahn responded. This mini robot is causing the tumours? Crichton asked. Oh, he's not sick at all, Zahn clarified. The nano trickster has merely convinced Rigel's brain that he's sick. His body is responding with appropriate physical symptoms. Are you saying I'm imagining this? Rigel wasn't happy. That dren, I'm dying. You're not, Zahn assured him. Your mind's been duped, and if I'm not mistaken, Moya is suffering the same malady. Moya? Chlorium, Zahn explained. How could it come aboard undetected? Rigel must have infected Moya with Nano Trickster, and Moya did likewise to Aaron. And this Trickster replicates itself. Mm, undoubtedly. Which means we've all been exposed. If Aaron's contaminated, why isn't she sick? Rigel demanded. It's a smart bug, Zahn related. It targets and short circuits each individual's most valuable senses. It convinced Rigel that his most critical faculty, digestion, was damaged. Similarly, Moral's, Moya's neural nexus, her very brain, has stopped responding to commands. And Erin? Her sense of clear-headedness seems affected, Zahn realised. 
The chip is tricking each victim and effectively destroying organized resistance. Making us sit in dark, said Crichton. That's the plan, not to kill us, but to make us easy pickings for a scar and tack or a Borden. That is clever. This is such a farscape solution to the problem yes. of how to capture people. Or oh, the Scarron ships could be hallucinations, Zahn offered. Oh, I doubt they're part of Rex's voodoo. I bet they've been shadowing us since we left the station, waiting for just the right opportunity to strike. Then we need to remove these frilling things, Rigel complained, starting with me. Uh, I'm no diagnostician, Rigel. My surgical skill is rudimentary. Wait a second. Crichton had a brainstorm. Have I ever told you about ECT? Yes, ECT phone home. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. This is no fire of time for fairy tales, Crichton. <laughs> That's a really good joke. <laughs> and that ET, ECT, electroconvulsive shock therapy. It's an earth technique that zaps people out of altered states. How barbaric. But Moya needs a shock to purge the trickster. If we electrify our hull, it could be exactly what the doctor ordered. Unfortunately, I see no alternative, Zahn acquiesced. We should try, Crichton decided, addressing his comm. Gianna, I need you to rewire the shields to electrify Moya's hull. Sounds hot! <laughs> Gianna answered seductively. <laughs> what? <laughs> Read the room, Chi. But also, please never change. <laughs> Crichton and Zan exchanged a worried look. She's infected, they declared simultaneously, oh, no. aware Chiana's most powerful sense was probably sexual. <laughs> I better get up there. Crichton reached command at full gallop, brushed past <laughs> Chiana and raced to the shield assembly, a boxy thing that resembled a mid-1950s telephone switchboard. Yeah, it does, doesn't he? He needed time to reverse three connections, splice two lines and bring the system up. Scarens have entered firing range. Pilot reported solemnly. Try a loop or a barrel roll. A uh, what? Crichton ignored Pilot, focusing on the task in front of him. He tied the last connection, stepped back, and waited for a split second. This had to work. From the perspective of the lead Scarron fighter, the fleeing Leviathan had failed utterly. A misconceived attempt to raise defences was instead resulting in chaotic flares of white sparks. The bulbous ship had been stung by an electric surge. The fighter drew near the lumbering craft, preparing to extend claw-like docking clamps. Crichton clenched his teeth. Pilot! Moya is stunned, but no longer numb. The symbiont proclaimed, surprise colouring his turtle-like face. Starburst! Pilot's graceful arms danced across his console. Starbursting now! Oh, hold... Prepare for Starburst! Yeah! The lead yeah. Scarron almost riding her back, Moya blurred and shifted out of normal space-time with an incredible rush. Her energetic wake fattened the... Flattened, not fattened. Mm -hmm. It's weird how, how one letter can make, make a such a difference, yes. Two complete antonyms. Her energetic wake flattened the pursuing fighter and it exploded into a million splinters of red-hot light. Disappointed, two Scarron brethren navigated around the tumbling debris. There would be no capture today. Frelling fantastic, Crichton whooped, slowly becoming conscious of Chiana's gloved hands around his waist. Uh, Zahn! I know, Zahn's voice broadcast throughout command. I'm developing a serum to flush out the nanotricksters. It should be less jolting than your ECT. Hurry up, Crichton prodded as the Nibari goosed his rear. <laughs> In the meantime, someone ought to help Aaron out of the basement. <laughs> oh, <laughs> John Kenneth Muir is author of the soon-to-be-published original Space 1999 novel, The Forsaken. Wow. From Powers Books, uh, the films of John Carpenter, Carpenter, Terror Television, Wes Craven, The Art of Horror, and Horror Films of the 1970s. A contributor to magazines such as Cinescape, Rerun, and Collector's News, John is also a regular columnist for a genre website deep outside science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Ooh. Whoa. I guess this is when you, people still had to like tell people about websites and the web. I'm amazed that there isn't like a page counter and a web ring on this magazine. Well, yes, they kind of never managed to work. I mean, I, I'm kind of disappointed they don't have any printed out jeeps in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, a, a work in progress and a, and a flaming skull. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for all for joining us for another episode of Tales from Tormented Space. Yes, and for delving into another episode of the Farscape Official Magazine. Uh, we'll see you next week with Season 4, Episode 15. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, I'm, it's clearly it's a memorable <laughs> uh, episode. It is, but we've done two of these recordings and... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm cocky. I'm K. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>